Well, that was fun. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. You know, a special, special crowd. Knew that they were going to come out there and be there for us. You know, I'll say this. It's hard to coach in the third quarter during shout, so I got to figure that out. You know, I thought we stumbled a little bit in the fourth. That being said, we came out to this game and said we want to be the more physical team. I think we were that. You know, we wanted to win critical situations. We were good on fourth down, um, able to stop them and then get ours whenever we had, you know, opportunities to go for it. Um, we wanted to outrush our opponent. You know, I think that's, that's a brand of physicality that we were able to show. Um, and then establish an identity. You know, we, I think everybody in the stadium at some point probably realized what we were doing when we ran, you know, Josh Connolly out there, a big group out there with, you know, uh, three tight ends in the back where we were about to get big and go play ball. And we didn't really care if you knew what we were going to do. You had to stop us. And I thought the um, our offense did a great job of that. Had some big um, defensive stops as well, you know, played contested ball as well. And then, you know, I thought this was our cleanest game from a special team standpoint. That all being said, there's so much that we can improve on, and we played, you know, BYU today, but we also played Oregon, right? And there's a, a lot that we want to finish games. We want to be able to capitalize at the end. I don't know that we did as well there uh, at the end as we want to do. So we'll continue to look to go uh, grow. We're about to go play a really good Washington State team. Um, so got to get ready for them. Um, all that being said, appreciate Duck Nation for the job they did today. We'll start on the right, right here with Zach. Coach, Jordan James played a really big role for you guys, especially on third and fourth down. What have you seen from him in, in fall camp and kind of leading up to this that really lets you be confident going into him, to him in those situations? Yeah, we make a lot of those decisions, you know, going into the game based on situations. And I think a lot of the situations you saw Jordan in were third and shorts, fourth and shorts. He's a he's a big back that runs physical, is able to get tough yards. And we had some tough yard situations today where Jordan was able to go have some success. Right here, Eric, on the left. I want to speak also about the offensive line, but the confidence to go for it there, I think fourth down in the first half, you're on 30. Talk, talk me through that decision. It seemed like it was a quick one, but why the confidence to go there? Yeah, we, you know, it's, it was uh, a lot of fun for me during this game. We talk about certain situations as a team in front of the entire team. So those decisions are made long away from the field before we ever get out there. Uh, you know, there's one point in the game where Noah Sewell comes up to me and we're on offense and he says, coach, why didn't we go for it there? I thought we'd go for it. You know, and I said, no, we're taking the points here. Right. So our guys understand our mentality and what we're going to do. A lot of those decisions are made before we ever get there. That happens in our staff meeting in a pregame meeting uh, before we ever arrive at that moment. So every one of our coaches had confidence in our players to go execute. And every one of our coach our uh, players had confidence in the plan. Singer right here, Bill. On the left. Yeah, and have you seen um, Bo? Uh, grow these these especially these last two weeks. I mean, the numbers have been there. He's done it in different ways. How has he kind of grown into this role? You talk about quarterback and you talk about decision maker. And obviously, we got to go back and watch the film. But I thought Bo made great decisions today. Again, each week he gets more and more confident in what we're trying to accomplish. Um, he understands. You know, it's the small things that you guys don't see that make him a special quarterback. The letting the play clock run at the end of the game there when a lot of people would go and just hike the ball. Um, you know, the being able to check us into a certain call based on certain looks they're in. Um, but he did a really good job of operating and, and handling what was out there for him today. All the way in the back, Matt. You might want to speak up as these microphones aren't great today. Dan, can you just speak on the sequences of events in the first half? They missed a the field goal. You guys milked the clock pretty well, scored a touchdown, get the ball in the second half go right back down and score? Was that kind of the pivotal moment you, you feel like of that game? I don't know about pivotal, um, you know, but that's what you hope might play out that way whenever you defer in the first, where you might get to steal an extra uh, extra possession in the first and then turn around and get one, you know, to start off the second uh, half. You know, I know we wanted to come out strong there at, at the beginning of the second and uh, did a good job there really early in the third quarter going to move the ball and, and uh, punch it in. Back right, Aaron. There's been a, a lot of pressure on Bo um, after that first game. And for him to come in today and, you know, take it himself to the first touchdown, leading you guys into a great half, do you feel like he maybe had a chip on his shoulder coming into this game? Or do you just feel like maybe, like, he hit the field today and things were just clicking for him? I think our team's really good at ignoring the outside noise, right? We, we only worry about the opinions in our room. And, you know, uh, there's nobody that's ever lost confidence in this building in Bo, including Bo, and his ability to go play for us. In the middle, Rob. I think you said last week, uh, I don't know if we know where we are yet. Uh, obviously, conference play coming up, there's a lot left to prove. But do you feel like you have a better sense now of just who you guys are as a group? I know this. I know we'll work, right? And uh, where we're at as a team, I still think there's there's uh, something to be decided. You're only as good as your last game, and you're only as good as your last play. we got to live in the moment. Um, we're not resting on our laurels. we got a lot of other things that we can go work on. Um, but we have a team that will work. 
right? I told, I told the guys in the locker room, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed more. And that's because of what you do between Monday through Friday in practice, right? We got to go work uh, on the practice field to be able to achieve in the game. And what you saw on the field today was a result of the hard work that happens Sunday to Friday. Front left, James. Dan, as a defensive coach, how do you describe um, what would be your words for an offense that is capable of six passes of 20 plus, including a 50 yarder over the top, the way that was, and also to go with 6 0 linemen and, and 13 personnel on first down and have a five and a half minute drive into the half? Yeah, ecstatic. You know, I asked, I asked our group if they felt like they could have a 14 minute drive there at the end of the quarter, if they ever seen it, and then we didn't. We, you know, in fact, we actually had a turnover there. Um, but that being said, I'm really proud of us. We wanted to walk away and create an identity, and we're not certainly not satisfied, but we want to find ways to create explosive plays. I think we found some of those today. I think when we go back and look at the film, you're going to see some explosive plays, not because the plays were outstanding, but because of outstanding effort. And that's what we were really looking for is outstanding effort from our players. Back right, Trevor. Dan, the tempo just seemed at a different level today. What do you attribute that to? Was that kind of a better understanding of the offense now? Was that an emphasis in practice? What do you kind of attribute that to today? We, we want to dictate the tempo. We don't want the people to dictate the tempo to us, right? And, and part of that's based off success. When you have successful plays, you can go fast. But I think you'll also see that we have the ability as an offense to slow it down at times, right? And that keeps the defense guessing, uh, makes it really hard for the other team to prepare. But we want to be able to play fast when we want to play fast. We want to be able to slow it down when we want to. And I thought, you know, Kenny and the offensive staff did a really good job of that today. Right here, front on the right, middle seat. Coach, were you, did you feel confident putting a uh, tie in towards the middle of that third quarter and what went into the decision to uh, take him out after a couple of drives? Yeah, absolutely. And Ty didn't do anything you know, wrong uh, other than I felt like we were in a position as a team that we needed to buckle up, knuckle up. We put our, our first group back in on defense, put our first group back in on offense, and it was time to make a stand. You know, you want an opportunity to get other guys opportunities. Ty absolutely didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I have the utmost confidence in him, but that was a decision for our entire team there as a unit to go put our ones in to set the standard and the, the set the model for how we we finish the game. Middle left, Eric. 61 yards rushing for BYU. I think that's a stat you're, you're probably pretty thrilled with. But just overall, the front seven, what was working today, and especially on a couple of those third and fourth downs that were so pivotal? Yeah, most physical teams going to win, right? And I think we've all heard, you know, uh, they, they play a physical brand of football. That's a good football team. You know, they've beat good teams. They've played in, in uh, tough environments. We knew it was going to take our best. Um, ultimately, if you can protect yourself against shots against that team, shots down the field, and you can stop the run, you're going to have a chance to be successful. So those were our two goals going in. Right, Zach. Do you have any update on guys like Byron Cardwell, Justin Flo, Seven McGee? I don't think any of them saw the field today. Yeah, uh, a couple of them did, but uh, yeah, really, Byron. Uh, was day to day throughout practice this past week, and he tested himself. Wanted to be able to push on Thursday. He's a warrior. Wanted to go to work. Came out and kind of went through warm ups, and I think it was still lingering. You could see he wasn't quite 100. Um, percent Didn't want to jeopardize, you know, his health um, in that situation. If we if we asked Byron to, I promise you he would have. And uh, that's a great example of his character and what he's willing to do for this team. That being said, we don't want to put our guys in position where they're not going to be healthy. Really, the same thing for Justin. You know, if we had to push Justin, he was able to go through warm warm-ups today. Um, he could have definitely contributed for us um, and helped us. Uh, that being said, the next guy up in both those situations, those guys prepare really hard. Uh, they earn their moments in practice. You earn the right to go uh, play football with the way you practice. And the next guy up at both those positions did a really good job. You know, Seven was able to go for us at times, but there was, you know, we were in a lot of 12 personnel. We were in some personnel groups that didn't always put him on the field. And I think his unselfishness is a great example of Seven saying, I don't care how we do it. I just want to win the game. All the way in the back, Matt. Dan, dating back to last week against Eastern, your first team offense has scored 13 straight times. 12 of those were touchdowns. Just what do you attribute to the efficiency of, of doing that over a two-game stretch? It goes back to, again, the way you work in practice, having a really good detailed plan. You know, we identified some things that we thought we could have success on in the week. I give credit to our offensive staff for finding some stuff. And we said if they don't adjust to this in certain ways, then it's going to be successful and we're going to do it until they stop us. And I think that's what you saw today is we, we were going to run some stuff, do some things until we weren't able to. And um, that was, you know, that's two game plans put together. Um, when it when it goes the way you think it's going to go, you know, being able to do that. What we have to figure out now is when it doesn't look the right way, are we able to adapt and continue to grow? Right here in the front, James. 
early on they were picking on Triquez a good bit. You guys turned to Jaleel and Dante uh, more in the second half. Just what your thoughts were on how Jaleel and Dante played in particular? I'll have to go. I'll have to go back and watch the film. You know, again, we see all those guys. If you're able to touch the field for us, we see you as a starter. And uh, want to see. I know. I know Dante was able to break up some contested balls there at the end. Um, want to go back and evaluate the film and see. You know where we're at. I know that there's some times that we had pretty good coverage throughout, and then we gave it up late. So we got to figure out. You know how do we work those finishes better and get better at that? But I'll, I'll probably. Have to tap into the film first. Back right, sure. And back to shout for a second. Going forward, how do you think you'll balance that? I mean, you know, letting the guys celebrate, but also kind of keeping the focus is kind of something unique to Oregon. How do you think you'll handle that going forward? Well, does anybody remember the next play after shout? We gave up a third down for a first down, so I don't know. I got to figure that out, right? We talked through what we were going to see and what we were going to play. We didn't finish on the sack, lost containment with the quarterback, so I got to get better at coaching that situation. We got some really good dancers on this team, right? <laughs> That's apparent, right? But I hope, um, you know, we'll have to figure out if there's a score margin or if there's a rule. You get the dance on shout based on what the score is. But um, I love that our players have energy and passion for this game. This game is meant to be fun, and our guys had fun out there today. But we got to be detailed and finish. Um, and that next play, we didn't finish. Second row left here, Bill. You've, met, you've mentioned wanting to establish an identity or the identity you were trying to establish uh, a couple of times. How do you sum it up? Like what, what do you call the identity or what do you want? We want, to, we want to be the kind of team that you don't want to play again. We want to be the kind of team that, you know, when you walk off the field, you're sore. You're feeling it, right? You felt physical and uh, we're relentless and we just continue to nag at you. And there were certainly some moments uh, today where I thought we showed that. I think there's some times where we could have finished and we didn't. Um, so looking for moments of growth, but relentless is, is the biggest word I probably could look to use. Right here, James in the front. Are there things that you picked up on even before Bo got here, Dan, and in the, in the last couple of weeks, particularly the Georgia game? We talk about basically eliminating, like Kenny talked about in the preseason, eliminate the highlight, the bad plays that end up on SportsCenter. Were there certain tendencies? You don't have to say what they were, but where that decision making occurred, were there certain routes, were there certain concepts that you were able to identify that you, if you could eliminate those from the thought process that he is capable of? Five touchdowns, both on the ground and in the air. I think Bo is uh, proving that he can do whatever we need him to do within a game, right? That means still operating within the system, but I think every – uh, every offensive coach would tell you in the nation that there's certain plays that have elements of risk or more risk than others. And, um, you know, I think we have to be a great team that at times we want to, you know, take the ball down the field like we did today, right? And at times we want to be able to, you know, uh, let our playmakers make plays in space and get, a, get the ball out quick. So, um, yeah, there's certainly some plays that are going to be more risk uh, oriented than others. And, and in games like today where you get an early lead, you don't have to necessarily, you know, work those risks. Right in the middle. I think it's Brenna, is that right? Brenna. Brenna. Uh, Coach Lanning, uh, the connection between Bo and Terrence Ferguson has been stellar this year so far. Terrence has four touchdowns and no other receiver has more than one. Was that a connection that you saw during camp that you thought was going to be really amazing or has, has that just kind of progressed over this season? I mean, I, th I think it's really shown up in the last two games. Um, you know, Terrence is a really good, you know, and talented uh, tight end. I think our other tight ends in that room are really talented as well. And, and he's been on the, the right end of the right call and, and the right coverage to allow him to go make a play. Um, but obviously there's a level of trust there for Bo and the rest of those guys that he's throwing to. Time for two more. We're going to the back, Matt. Yeah, you've wrapped up non-conference play. Just your thoughts on where this team is at heading into Pac-12 play and some just early thoughts of Washington State. They've got a big win last week against Wisconsin. They're up 31 nothing right now. Holman can be a tough place despite its size. I've got a lot of respect for their head coach, and I think um, what they do, they've proven to be a tough team that can make, you know, go win tough games. I know they've had a battle with Con Wisconsin. I know they had a battle with Idaho, and they're able to go out there and compete and do a really good job, you know, and they, they present some different stuff, especially offensively from a uh, how you defend them standpoint. So I'm anxious to get in the film. I've been able to glance at them a little bit already, um, but looking forward to, to touching base on them even more. Last question, James. Defensively, Dan, since they didn't throw as much uh, at you by way of um, uh, multiple running backs and receiving stuff, you guys went with more of a traditional 4-3. Mace was out there that way. Bennett was more in a deep safety. with Duke played a lot. Your thoughts on those three in particular, how Jackson played, how Mace played, and Bennett, and 
just a different kind of capacity. This this was not the defensive scheme you were running the past two weeks. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we're going to match personnel based on personnel and what they do. And they, they were a 12 team that lined up in 12 formations, right? So um, we're going to play with our bigger people in that in that scenario. T to speak on how we played, I got to go back and watch the film. I know there's some plays I want back um, that weren't right. Um, lost leverage a couple times. Um, want to do a better job there. Weren't, weren't able to really finish on the quarterback as much as I'd like, but that it's also part of how they dictate and how they play the game. It doesn't allow you to. So I want to go back and evaluate it, but, yeah, we're going to be able to match our personnel based off their personnel. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate, Appreciate you guys. Time. Have a good, good one. Job.